Hi everyone, I'm Susan Jacob and in this video I'm going to show you posterior polar phaco emulsification. Now the first thing to be remembered in these cases is that there is an increased risk of posterior capsular rent uh, and therefore care has to be taken. Uh, the rexes should be made as central and also of uh, an adequate size in order to be able to place the IUL in the sulcus with an optic capture in case of a posterior capsular end. The next thing that I do is a multi-quadrant focal limited and very gentle visco dissection with the viscoelastic not going further than a couple of millimeters beyond the rexus margin and this helps to prevent an accidental hydro dissection and of course we know that hydro dissection in a posterior polar cataract should never be performed. What I do next is to go ahead and uh, try to get that uh, soft uh, nucleus outside. We know that the nucleus in posterior polar cataracts is generally soft and the patient presents early uh, because of the opacity being in the nodal point of the eye. Now once you've done this, the other important thing to notice is to avoid chamber fluctuations and therefore before withdrawing the phaco probe, you always inject viscoelastic. In this case, uh, I do something which I may not always advise you to do and that is a visco uh, delineation. I try to bring the epinucleus out uh, uh, a little more by injecting viscoelastic into that space between the epinucleus and the cortex and finally I aspirate all the cortex out very gently making sure that I never apply the probe even in capsule polishing mode directly onto the posterior capsule. Any plaque or cortical fibers that are left uh, can be ignored and handled with a YAG capsulotomy at a later date. So um, again, you can see me injecting viscoelastic before I come out with the IA probe and this is to avoid sudden chamber fluctuations which by itself can cause the weakened posterior capsule to rupture and cause a posterior capsular rent. Now while injecting the intraocular lens also you should take care that the leading edge of the IUL does not hit the central posterior polar uh, area and that it slides gently into the phonics of the capsular bag. Here's another case of a posterior polar cataract and again I do the rexus and again it's important to make it uh, large enough to be able to do an optic capture if required and uh, uh, this is again how I perform the gentle multifocal uh, uh, limited uh, visco dissection. You can see that I do not let the viscoelastic go more posterior uh, and it's just generally limited to a couple of millimeters of the rexus rim. Again a hydro delineation is being seen performed here if you notice the hydro dissection was not performed and that is a contraindicated step in posterior polar cataracts. Hydro delineation is performed and I do it till I get the golden ring which uh, tells me that the nucleus has loosened up and then you can go ahead and lollipop it out of the epinuclear shell and uh, the rest of the uh, principles followed are the same as done for uh, posterior polar cataract surgery and explained in the previous case. Here's a patient with posterior polar cataract and nucleus sclerosis and in this case it's important to identify it uh, preoperatively because the nucleus sclerosis may sometimes mask the posterior polar component. It's generally seen intraoperatively with a good red reflex from the operating microscope. Again, I've done a uh, rexus and I do, uh, in this case, hydro delineation. You can see me going into the substance of the nucleus uh, while doing the hydro delineation. And it is important to not be superficial while injecting the fluid to avoid an accidental hydro dissection and posterior capsular rupture. As mentioned earlier and as I'd like to repeat over and over again in the video, a hydro dissection should never be performed in a posterior polar cataract. So here I do a stop and chop and I've uh, created a trench first and then gone and divided the nucleus into two halves and then I go further forwards and uh, emulsify the rest of the nucleus. Of course, there should be at no point posterior pressure applied on the uh, capsule uh, which ca could cause a, a rent to occur. Uh, cortex aspiration is finally performed and uh, every time you come out with the phaco probe or the IA probe, you should make sure that you inject viscoelastic and avoid that sudden shallowing of the anterior chamber which could cause the posterior capsule to rupture. I do hope you enjoyed watching this video. Do check out my YouTube channel for more of these. Thank you so much.